Lush, and I'm here at the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos. Very pleased to be joined by Evan Davis, presenter of Newsnight. This is a little bit like two journalists talking Indeed. to each other, sort of mirrors reflecting. <laughs> Big week for Europe. What have you been hearing? Well, it's really interesting. I, so I've been coming to Davos. I, I, I haven't been to a few, but mm -hmm. I was here in 2009 and 10, right, just after the crash. And there was enormous angst at that time around when is it going to finish? How are we going to get out of this? Mm -hmm. And they're still discussing that here five years later. Right. But I, I just sense it's coming more and more focused onto, onto the continent of Europe. Mm -hmm. And it's been, it's been very interesting that it's been a week in which we've seen the European Central Bank make a very decisive step yep. change in mm -hmm. policy on monetary policy. A big Greek election coming up mm -hmm. at the end of this week. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I've sort of found that a lot of the talk probably reflecting the people I'm talking to, right. but a lot of the talk has been about Europe and whether Europe is kind of in a sort of long-term decline, mm -hmm. whether things like the European Central Bank can really get it out of its, its somewhat moribund state. It's neither collapse, it's not quite a crisis, it's not the acute phase that was there mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. earlier years, but there's just this sort of sense of chronic fatigue. display. Yeah, <laughs> fatigue, it's a, a little bit fatigued. So uh, it's been quite interesting. And yet, Edie, this is an important rider to that. When you actually talk to people about the macroeconomics, they're very depressed yep. about Europe, much more than other yep. parts. But when you talk to them at a sort of micro level about where you spend time mm -hmm. or where you would like to own an apartment or right. where you'd like to invest, there's still actually quite a lot of optimism about Europe. I was speaking to a couple of young, one African, mm -hmm. one Asian, mm -hmm. sort of youngish, yeah. successful investor types. They had quite a lot of positive stuff to say about the actual stuff they do in Europe, but not about the sort of macro, macro position. Have you been hearing anything about the UK and Europe while you've been here? Well, how long have we got? <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's, it's quite interesting, isn't it? I was actually the African I was talking to yesterday. Uh, she was saying, well, from Africa, we don't really think of the UK as part of Europe. There's Europe and there's the UK. We don't right. think of them as part of the same thing. Right. And in a way, I think there is that perception here that the UK economy is not quite in sync with the Eurozone economy. It has, it's been growing more quickly in the mm -hmm. last year. It is a little bit of a different experience. That all being said, I don't think anyone could say the UK has recovered from the crash yet. Yeah. Um, it's been sort of spectacularly different experience to Europe in that we've created loads of jobs in the yeah. UK. We've managed to have a bigger dip and then a sort of a recent bounce back. But until, <laughs> this applies to the whole of Europe, mm -hmm. until you've solved both the problem of growth and deficits, mm. you haven't really cured it. So a lot of countries can say we've got the growth, but we haven't solved the deficits. Mm -hmm. And other countries can say we've solved the deficit, but they haven't solved the growth. And in the UK, I don't think we've kind of managed both those. And until you've managed both those, until you've got some growth without having to borrow money, uh, you really aren't, I think, out of the crash. So the UK, I think, likes to think of itself as separate from Europe, but it's, it's, it is still only 20 miles away. <laughs> Evan, thank you so much for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion here in Davos, and I'm Edie Lush.